Hello, folks, for the uh, eager beavers that have already started to join, and there is a few of you already. Thanks for joining. A couple of minutes early, we'll kick off um, just after six o'clock Eastern time, um, and we should have a few, quite a few participants on by then, and uh, we'll get you all warmed up and going for this webinar, jointly hosted by Delta Agribusiness and AgriWeb. Now, what I might do as we're warming up, as we're getting started here, um, I'm, I'll start a poll. So we'll have a few polls throughout this webinar. And it's just, we find it's a good idea and a good way to get people warmed up to start up with a poll. And so I'll launch this poll now. So as you join, it'll just be asking you a simple question, which is what best describes your operation. So. I'll launch that poll now and if you can answer that question. So hi folks, if you've just joined, uh, we'll kick off in a couple of minutes. Um, you're the eager folks that have joined a couple of minutes early. Thank you for that. And, and as you are joining, if you could answer the poll, that'd be great. Um, additionally, as you're joining, if you could write in the chat. So in the Zoom chat, if you just click the little chat icon, and it'd be great to hear from you if you could let us know whereabouts um, in the country that you're from uh, in Australia, that would be fantastic. If you wanna tell us the nearest town or location or postcode, that'd be great. If you could pop that in the chat, it'd be great to get a sense of where everyone's from. Thanks, Ray. 2823, our first person to bravely put something in the chat. Appreciate it, Ray. And we've got a few people who've uh, answered the question so far, what best describes your operation? And we've got Sally from 2386. Oh, lots of people putting stuff in the chat. That's fantastic. Grenfell, uh, Peter from Central West, Molong, uh, Emma from Cowra. I uh, went to uni with um, uh, uh, a girl who uh, whose dad was the vet in Cowra. That was many years ago. He's probably retired. Uh, Philip from 2329, two, two, Fiona, Pleasant Valley, Riverina, near Henty. Thanks, Fiona. Aaron in the um, Binda area. Uh, and Greg, oh, Lake Bathurst, God's country, James. Thanks for sharing that. Um, so people continuing to join, it's just on six o'clock. Um, thanks for joining on time or a little bit early. I've shared a poll. Um, so if you could answer that poll question, it's just uh, asking simply what best describes your operation, whether you're beef, sheep, mixed livestock, dairy cropping or mixed farm. And, um, and also while you're joining, if you could go to the chat icon and also let us know whereabouts you're from, that'd be marvellous just to get a sense of where everyone's from. And uh, we'll get going with the webinar proper in a couple of minutes. My name's Mike Hands. I'm AgriWeb Country Manager. And uh, I'm joined by Ed from AgriWeb and also Sophie Smith from Delta Agribusiness. We'll do a little bit more introductions in a moment. Okay. If anyone else as you're joining would love to share where you're from, it'd be great to get an understanding. Jared's from Forbes. Thanks, Jared. Um, lovely country out around that Forbes area. And for anyone that's just joining so far, I've started the webinar by putting a poll just to get an idea about what type of operation you are, you, you are running or you work on. And uh, I'll share the results of the poll once, uh, once we get started with the webinar proper. And uh, so I'm asking you two things, which is pretty uh, uh, pretty big ask, I guess, but one is to answer the poll. And then secondly, if you can pop in the chat in Zoom, whereabouts you're from, that'd be great. Tom's from Yarrawalla, uh, Northwest Victoria, Melissa, fantastic. Edward from 2018 Mix Farm, uh, 2810 and then Robert from Warren in Central West New South Wales. So good spread of um, different locations around New South Wales and Victoria. Okay, we're at <clears throat> 6.02. So, um, and we've got 
pretty good participation in the poll so far. If you're just joining, if you can answer that poll question, that'd be great. And uh, also pop in the chat whereabouts you're from. Uh, from a wet kuma on Monero, yes. Some good rain happening out there, I'm sure. All right, fantastic. I will might end the poll there and then we'll get started with the session. So let me end that and then I will share the results and you'll see that um, for everyone that's answered so far that joined, we've got 43% mixed farm and then 25% uh, sheep, then 20% mixed livestock and then 13% beef, no dairy or pure cropping farmers on um, tonight. So let's get going. I'll put the poll away for the moment and uh, feel free to keep using the chat. And actually throughout the session, um, you can also use the Q&A um, option at the top there. So if you've got a question and you wanna ask during the session, you can use Q the, the Q&A to post your question and one of the panelists will answer it or we may defer it to the Q&A section at the end. Um, you can also raise your hand if you wanna ask a burning question. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get cracking. I, um, uh, now, I would start with the welcome to country, and then I realise I'm just going to have to go out of here so I can actually read it because it's in my notes. So I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today and pay our respects to their elders past, present and future. All right, so um, let's get going. Thank you, everyone, for joining so far. Any questions as we go, pop it in the, in the Q&A section. Now, I'll just start with this quick slide because I know sometimes people have to leave and can't make it all the way through the session. And this is actually the last slide that we'll finish with. But I just want to let you know that we are recording this webinar and you'll receive an email tomorrow with a recording. So you can watch it back later. Uh, and in that email, we'll also share with you how you can book a follow-up consultation uh, with an AgriWeb and Delta consultant. And then for anyone that does decide that AgriWeb is the right tool that they would like to use, then by virtue of attending this webinar, uh, and if, or if you're an existing Delta customer, you're entitled to a 15% discount. Now, this is our agenda for tonight. Uh, so my name is Mike Hands, AgriWeb Country Manager, and joining me on this webinar tonight is Sophie Smith, who's a Livestock Production Advisor from Delta Agribusiness. Thanks, Sophie. Great to have you on the webinar tonight. And then also with me is Ed McGeek, who's a Product Consultant with AgriWeb, has now been with AgriWeb for two years. Um, now, we were going to have Josh Collins as well, also from AgriWeb, but he has a pretty nasty cold, not COVID, as far as I know, so just a nasty cold, so he won't be with us, but uh, Ed and I will cover off and do our best Josh Collins impersonation uh, when we get to the demo component. So I'll take on the intro in a moment, then we'll I'll hand over to Sophie uh, for the Wide Delta Ag plus AgriWeb, then I'll be back with Ed for the demonstration, then finally we'll Finally, we'll finish up with, with Q&A. Okay, onwards. So um, brief introduction on AgriWeb. So um, AgriWeb started about, well, it started seven years ago. Uh, this is actually Wirri Alpha, uh, which is a property down in South Australia of one of our founders, John Farga. And this is how we see ourselves and what our mission is at AgriWeb to empower the livestock industry with the best tools to feed the world sustainably, profitably and efficiently. So it's a pretty big mission, um, but that's not really where we started, if I'm completely honest. Where we actually started um, with our founders, such as John, is, is somewhere like this. Um, and the kind of problems that John was facing on the family farm was carrying around a notebook, having it go through the wash, losing that information or not being able to find that information again, or having the notebook in the wrong truck, not having access to it, um, or simply losing it. Um, and so the inefficiency of keeping that information in a notebook, or in fact, his dad having all the information in his head was one of the key challenges and the founding points for why AgriWeb existed. So we started not really with that big mission of feeding the world sustainably and 
uh, allowing the industry or enabling the industry to move forward in a more profitable and sustainable manner. It started with this pretty basic idea, how do we put something in the hands that's electronic, mobile, works offline and online? And that's where we started. And this is where we've come to um, over the last seven years. So it's now gone from a fairly simple maps and mobs application to one that allows producers to manage end-to-end -end livestock management. So from everything around livestock management, pasture management, and business management. So we'll allow you to manage and improve fertility, weight gain, focus on health and nutrition, get the most out of your livestock production, and also be able to manage your pasture and get the greatest yield, understand your total cost of production, what's yielding the greatest productivity across your paddocks of your farm. And then lastly, transparency into your business. So do you have that clarity about what's happened in the past and are you able to do forward planning so you can ensure you've got a secure and a, and a profitable future? And so these are all now the entirety of what we offer with AgriWeb and a little bit later, we'll show you by demonstration how that comes to life. And um, a little bit of background on AgriWeb, if you're not aware of us, uh, as I said, we were founded seven years ago, an Australian company. Um, the majority of our employees still are based in Australia, but we now have customers in most parts of the world and we have um, premises and offices in the UK as well as North America. In Australia, we've grown to 17 million animals under management, more than 7,000 farmers, a whole range of territory, more than 100 million acres. We're adding more than 100 farmers uh, per month on average, and most people stay on. So pretty high, in fact, pretty enviable retention rate. Now, what does that mean and what can, they, can this mean? So we've run a survey and asked AgriWeb customers, existing customers, what is the amount of improvement either through increased productivity and profitability or time saving, what kind of benefits they've achieved. And on average, uh, the response was at around 2%. And so what I've got here is an example of a mixed livestock business, which actually was the bulk of our respondents and attendees here tonight. And this is what it would look like for an operation of this size with a 2% improvement. Um, and so the average time saving equates to around 5,800 and the increase in fertility breeding through to weaning and then the weight gain you can achieve with AgriWeb actually quantifies out to around $62,000. Now, that's a 2%. We also got um, the majority of people said 5%. So the median response was 5%. So the same type of operation with a 5% improvement would quantify out about $185,000 a year. Now, when we did a very similar webinar about six weeks ago, we asked what sort of performance improvement do you think you could achieve with that and with AgriWeb and being able to manage your entire operation with this tool? And 97% of people said, well, we think we'd be able to improve by at least 2%, which is the numbers on the left. And 85% of people said, well, we think at least 5%, and interestingly, nearly half, so 43% said 10% or more. So nearly half the people for an operation of this size think that you could achieve um, more like $360,000 in terms of improvement. So just to give you a sense of this is the kind of quantification of improvement that can be achieved. Now, I'm about to hand over to Sophie, who's gonna talk about um, the benefits of the Delta Plus AgriWeb partnership and the combination. But before we do that, I'm just going to launch a second poll. And this poll is going to ask whether you're an existing customer. So if you could just take 30 seconds and answer that poll for me, this, that'd be great. And so either are you an AgriWeb customer currently? Are you a Delta customer? Are you both or are you neither? So there are your four options, and I'm pretty sure we've covered every possible combination of things that you could be with that particular poll. So I'll just let that run. We've got 82% of people have answered already. So um, I'll let that run for just another few seconds, and then I'll share the poll results, and we'll see what we get. And probably not surprisingly, 
as I now end the poll and share it with you. The majority are already Delta customers, so welcome to you. Thanks for coming along. Got a few folks, a couple that are AgriWeb customers um, only, and then 23% that are both. And then a few welcome who are neither right now. Hopefully you will be one or the other or both of um, in the not too distant future. Okay. So I'll stop sharing the poll and now I'm gonna hand over to Sophie and she is gonna take us through the next part of the presentation. Over to you, Sophie. All right, well, thanks, Mike. Um, as you guys already know, uh, I'm Sophie and I'm based down in Henty in Southern New South Wales. And as Mike said, I'm here tonight to answer the why uh, between the AgriWeb and the Delta relationship. And I am just going to turn my camera off to make sure we don't have any little dropouts. We did have a blackout here last night. So fingers crossed the storms stay away. So as a group, we're seeing a huge growth within the livestock systems that our customers run. Uh, the information we're able to capture and the expertise we can draw on is evolving season on season, allowing us to achieve targets that we never thought we could. Coming together with AgriWeb, we believe it gives our customers the extra level of efficiency and transparency that modern agriculture is calling for. We see AgriWeb enhancing not only our overall animal production and compliance, but also preparing us for and adapting us for the future as well. Um, if you could just click through, uh, Mike. So within animal production, AgriWeb allows us to identify the hidden losses that are quietly but severely impacting the profitability of our livestock enterprises. These losses could be through nutritional efficiencies or incorrect drench choices. And up until this point have been pretty hard to measure and to understand. So if we're planning for weight gain, for example, we're able to estimate daily gains and therefore time on feed. Uh, and this will help us to decide on paddock allocation and the feed quality at the end of the grazing. So if we're leaving behind as little as 5% uh, worms through choosing inefficient drench, we, we may not be able to notice that production loss. However, through tracking of performance, we might be able to then pick up those extra days on feed and then the dollar value that might be attached to that. When we're preparing for the future, we're referring to the rapidly growing technology sector. With EDI being compulsory in, cattle, in the cattle industry and the sheep industry starting to follow suit, the want and need to utilise this technology is imperative. It will allow for a better understanding of your production system through the data we can record, measure and analyse. Definitely at a store level, we're noticing the increase in EID tag orders and readers. Naturally, many of the studs are adopting this a little bit earlier, but the shift uh, for the commercial enterprises is also becoming evident, especially down in my area of the world. We're very close to Victoria, so it's not unreasonable for us to be selling uh, over the border. Um, so being able to make something or get a little bit more out of that extra cost for the tags is always going to be a benefit. Lastly, with the audits becoming ex increasingly important, um, having a simple record keeping solution eases the stress and reduces the preparation time necessary. You'll have all your batch numbers, expiry dates and a total inventory all in a central location. Uh, our customers that are already on AgriWeb always comment on the overwhelming performance, uh, sorry, overwhelming response that they get when they tell the auditor that they're on AgriWeb. They just know that it's going to be a nice, simple process and a tick of the box. So having a broader look at the capabilities of AgriWeb, there are many other benefits that come to mind. Again, it is utilising the technology available, allowing us to use the full capabilities that readers and scanners offer. We are then also bringing together all the external and internal factors, making more informed choices around size, breeds, paddock capabilities and input benefits. Customers are able to track that performance, for example, of weaners that they're trying to fatten, and then this enables us to book in even lines of cattle on future pricing. We're able to build a relationship between Delta advisors. By bridging that gap between agronomic and livestock advice, we're bringing greater cohesion to your operation. 
we see the livestock sector in a similar position to where agronomy might have been 20 or 30 years ago. Um, so having a platform like AgriWeb to deliver comprehensive, well-rounded advice that can complement that ag agronomic advice is a huge benefit. Further on that, you're able to receive real-time advice. This is done through better paddock and mob status identification, which can be done remotely, or if it needs to be done on farm, there's no need for directions and landmarks. Um, you can just easily say, go to paddock one, and off we go. We know exactly where we're going. We can find the gates and we can do what we need to do. You can achieve better organisation through allocations of tasks. Uh, on, the, on the run tasks can be allocated as they arise, or it can be for management recommendations that should be completed before a mob, mob is moved into a new paddock. So say on an advisor level, we do quite a few faecal egg counts, and it means that we can go out, collect what we need to collect, and when we know the results, we can easily choose a drench choice. We know the head number, we probably even know the weight in that paddock, and we can um, recommend without a lot of fuss and um, less time. Your ability to forward plan and make the critical decisions also becomes easier. AgriWeb is assisting in making informed decisions in regard to mob allocations for future operations, such as preparing or prioritising certain paddocks for lambing or calving. Having the history of paddocks all in one place, coupled with what is currently happening, makes those decisions easier and allows the impending management tasks to be clear. And then all of these factors allow for increased efficiency between the owner, employees, and the advisors. Uh, you'll be able to increase efficiency across all aspects of your business as you have the ability to share information better, which provides a better understanding of the desired outcome. Allocations, allocation of tasks on farm and also between the advisor and producer keeps tasks and responsibilities clear and offers more transparency for everyone involved. In regard to the functionality, the reports and the reports we're able to generate, we find AgriWeb is really kicking some goals. Uh, just move on, sorry, Mark. As a group, we've been testing out AgriWeb for a few months now, and I wouldn't say that we're all extremely tech savvy, but regardless of that, we've been able to navigate our way around the maps and mob movements uh, with a fair bit of ease. The operational planner is one feature which we think we'll find quite useful. Um, it provides a quick overview of the year for forward planning purposes. We've, we already make annual health plans um, within our day to day, but being able to have access to live updates as well as access to that history will really bring a whole new level of efficiency and comprehension to our work and therefore the producers that we work with. At the end of the day, all the information we've collected throughout the year would be worth nothing if we didn't use it to provide informed decisions for the following year. So with the benchmarking and reporting capabilities of AgriWeb, we're able to accurately measure performance such as average daily gains or our marking and weighting percentages. Really overall, Delta wanted to get involved as we thought it would provide a huge benefit to our customers and their overall production system. Whether it's for compliance at the next audit, record keeping, or for measuring and capturing results at different times of year, we think AgriWeb is an easy solution. It's simple to use, and it gives you a whole farm view from the paddock to the office. Um, and AgriWeb facilitates a partnership between customer and advisor, providing high level of efficiency for day-to-day -day tasks, as well as assisting in making the right decisions for future planning. Simply put, I think that's all I probably really need to say. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks. Thanks, Sophie. And uh, if you've got questions uh, for either myself or Ed or Sophie as we go, please pop it in the Q&A box. And there is a question there. Um, uh, and it is a very good question. So I might read it out now, now and we'll cover this off. So the question is, uh, will Delta, Delta set up a system so that purchases are automatically entered onto AgriWeb? Currently entry of inventory is slow and sometimes forgotten. So that is a great question. Um, it's uh, one that uh, we have been talking to Delta about. 
it's not something that will happen instantaneously. There's a bit of work to be able to do that and connect up um, the point of sale system with AgriWeb. It's something that is certainly um, has a lot of potential and we'd love to get there. So um, it's certainly on the long-term roadmap. Um, so stay tuned for that one. Thanks for that question, great question. All right, brilliant. So um, before we progress on to the demonstration component, I've got another poll. Um, and this one is asking you to just let us know what was the primary reason if there was one thing that you could pick as to the reason why you were intrigued and interested to attend this webinar, um, if you could let us know. So um, whether that was keeping better records, increased profitability, save time compliance, operational transparency, forward planning, or something else, if you could let us know. Now, I do appreciate I sent out some emails myself to a few folks to um, invite them along to tonight's session. And I'm pretty confident that the reason why they attended was because I put a pretty sensational joke uh, in the start of that particular email. So I'd hate to disappoint anyone that attended thinking they were going to hear more jokes uh, and let them down by not telling them one. So for all those that didn't see the particular joke that I, that I sent in the email, here is an example, and it is a classic dad joke. What happened to the man with five legs? His trousers fit him like a glove. Pretty good, don't you think? Feel free to use that one. So uh, I promise you that the demo will be better than the jokes. Okay, cool. So we've got um, most of the respondees. It looks like everyone, a uh, pretty good proportion of people have now responded to the poll. So uh, let me just end that and I'll share the results so that you can see what we've got here and you can look at what else, uh, what other people have said. So keeping better records was number one, nearly 50%, and then uh, increasing profitability and operational transparency and forward planning and then some other ones. So if there's other, we'd love to hear from you. If you posted in the chat that you were attending for another reason, then, then let us know. That'd be great. All right. Um, so now we're going to proceed on to the demonstration component. And for that, I'm going to stop sharing and I'll hand over to Ed who will share his screen. Perfect. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, good everyone. Um, as Mark said, uh, my name's Edward. Uh, yeah, I've been with AgriWeb for a few years now, um, regionally based down near Wollombe, uh, New South Wales. And yeah, we've um, yeah, certainly been customers of, of Delta uh, alongside AgriWeb for a while. So yeah, it's a very fitting webinar to have these guys kind of together and to, to try and showcase how we can uh, kind of benefit that, that relationship moving forward. So I'm going to jump in here with a, a demo. We've got a nice interactive um, demo, just starting with the mobile app. Um, as you know, it's a, a dual platform uh, program. So we've got our web app alongside our mobile app. Uh, and the mobile app here is pretty well the kind of heartbeat of the operation um, within your, your AgriWeb uh, data input. Uh, the reason for that is it works offline. So you could be, you know, out in the paddocks with, uh, with no service and it will function as it would uh, in any other scenario. So you're able to put those records in, you know, at any time. There's no scenario of having to come back to the office or come back into uh, any area of service before you can kind of put those in and risk, you know, forgetting uh, what you're wanting to put in. So that's one of those kind of, I guess, yeah, crucial benefits around why that mobile app, the concept of, you know, it's always in your pocket, whip it out when you're there and put those kind of records in. And as you can see here, we're just on the, the map view. So you've got a, a look of the, the map here with the, the paddock outlines and also your livestock on the screen here. Um, so if I just go through this demo here, as you can see, if I click in on this livestock marker, it groups stock when you've zoomed out so you don't have an extremely busy map and you've got you know, mob icons all over the place. When you click in here, it starts to expand those mob icons out with a little bit more detail associated with them as well. So from a farm map perspective, you can see your, your paddock names there and your size. Uh, and then also with your mob icons, you can see a, a bit of information around what's going on there. So you've got your, your species are present in that icon there. Um, you've got your number of, of head in that mob listed below it. And then also those colours at the top represent the year tag colours that you've got uh, for the individuals within that mob. And then on top of that as well, you can see that red W on some of those icons down in that, that bottom corner there. Uh, that shows if any of those stocks in withholding. So if you've applied any treatments uh, recently, this is just a very handy way to be able to jump on and see if they're still in withholding. Um, if you've you know, got any uh, going to sale uh, stock, you want to be able to make sure that they're outside of those withholding periods. For example, uh, this is a nice, clearly, um, I guess, discernible way of seeing that just by simply looking at that farm map. 
as we dive into the, the next stage here, when you click in on that, that paddock, starts to open up your individuals list here. And this is where you start to get to that greater level of depth. Um, and it'll list out all the individuals that you've got present in that paddock. In this case here, you can see I've got one Moreno and then one Angus. And some of the information that's at least on this page here, just at the, at the uh, initial glance is you've got your visual ID there, um, your age class and your breed alongside the weight and the age of those uh, individuals. What you can then do is as you dive in and click in on that specific animal there, it opens up the animal history card here. So what you get here is, I guess, all of the information that you've uh, input against that individual. So you can see, again, you've got your, your visual ID, your breed, um, and your species and age class at the top there. And then you also start to see your EID uh, is built out, your date of birth, uh, and a few other things such as their fertility status, um, if they have been weaned or not. And as you continue down, you start to get into some of those production metrics as well. So um, as Sophie was saying before, one of the, the key, I guess, benefits is having that projected average daily gains uh, to be able to see, you know, how that, that stock's tracking whilst out in the paddock. And these are based on, you know, assumed daily gains or also actual daily gains in this case, if you've got multiple weight records in for those uh, individuals. Then you've got your DSE as well. Uh, and one of the handy things about the DSE values, which we've um, recently uh, input into the individual system, is the actual automatic DSE updating capabilities. Um, and you've got a few options with those. That could be just from, from age classing, uh, also based on your weight. So it will automatically update uh, as you put those new weight records in for those individuals, and also on a feed consumption basis. So based off the percentage of, of their body weight that's consumed uh, each day. And then again, you've got some other features such as your condition score, that withholding warning as well, uh, let you know when that animal will come out of withholding. And then just a, a kind of last production metric down here showing you all of the previous weights that you've had associated with that individual. And you can start to get a bit of a trend going here to see if hopefully they're trending upward and at the rate you'd want them to be, to be going upwards at as well. So that's, I guess, all the information you see on that initial summary card. And right at the top, you can see there's a history icon. Um, so this is the next thing you can dive into when you're looking at those individuals. And this is where you can start to see all of those records that you've applied against those individuals uh, coming to life in an easy view here so that you can have, you know, the simple capability of jumping back in and seeing every record that's been applied to that animal um, for, for any purpose whatsoever. So as you can see, any feed records that have been applied, uh, your treatment records, down to the batch number, the dosage that was uh, given, and if specified, that reason for treatment as well, whether or not it's a, a simple, you know, induction drench, um, if it's a specific vaccination treatment for any individual antibiotics, for example, you'll be able to, to discern that in this history tab. Again, their movement records, um, any of those weight records and their tagging record as well. So you can start to see kind of the full traceability of that individual uh, whilst it's uh, spent any time on, on farm and, and is been added into the, the agri-web system. The next step here is we've just dived in, looked at the livestock, but at the top of the screen, we've got a few tabs um, such as livestock paddocks and tasks. So as we were saying with Mike before, it is that kind of all encompassing or aiming to be that all encompassing um, product where you're able to put in those, those paddock records alongside your livestock records. So as you can see on the map here, not only will you have your livestock markers, but there's also your landmarks. Um, so that's from troughs through to, to rain gauges, your water tanks, um, any of your feeders. Uh, if you've applied bait as well, um, you can see by that a nice icon down in that bottom left corner there. Uh, kind of, I guess you name it, there's a large array of, of landmarks. And the beauty of these landmarks is once you've added them in, you can actually go in and, and add, rec add notes against these, these landmarks. You can move those landmarks if it's a feeder, for example. Um, and for your rain gauges and water tanks, you can go in and adjust those water level readings, assign those rain gauge records out as well. And on top of that, when you actually click into those paddocks as well, you can see here this paddock in red, another good example of what will happen if you've got a paddock in withholding. Uh, similar to the mob icons with that W, that paddock will be highlighted in red. And you can see you start to get some of that uh, high-level production idea around how that paddock's performing. So you've got your withholding period there, the date that it should come out of the withholding. And then on top of that, you've got your feed on offer value uh, and you pass your growth rates. And also once you've set it, you've also got that minimum food target, which um, as we'll get into a little bit later, starts to infer uh, how many grazing days remaining you've got left in that paddock. And it'll allow you to know when you're going to get to a certain minimum food target and that stock should be, uh, should be removed from that paddock if that is obviously in your grazing uh, plan. Hey, and then, yes. Just managed to just dive in there. Just uh, while we were talking withholding, there was a question live, which is uh, from John. Does the withholding warning distinguish between domestic and overseas? 
Yes, so you do have the ability to put your withholding and an ASI um, in there. So when you do go in to look at that animal card, right down the bottom, it'll say your meat uh, withholding and then also your export withholding as well. So you will be able to record that in there. Perfect. Thanks, Ed. No, that's all right. So as I was saying before, similar layout to what was in that the livestock side of things, which is going to be a common theme. It, it does look very, uh, very similar as you go through for that kind of consistency throughout the app. You've got that history tab at the top there as well. So when you dive into this history, as it was with the livestock, again, you've got that complete uh, traceability of all the records that have been applied to that paddock. So you can see here, I've got my treatment record, uh, who was created by the specific area that was, uh, was treated. Again, my withholding and, and application rates, any pasture growth rates that you've put in, um, those specific feed on offer readings and recordings that you've got as well. Um, and if you have any other, you know, cultivation records, sowing records, harvest records, et cetera, they'll all appear uh, in this paddock uh, history tab for you to come back in and look at it at any time. The, the final, I guess, uh, tab on this, this map icon here is the, the tasks. So as you can see, as you toggle through, it adjusts what you actually can visualize on that map. So those landmarks and those uh, mob icons are gone. And now you can see those task icons are present across the map. As you look at those tasks, the uh, initials within the, the mob there show um, who's actually assigned that task. So in this case, that task has been assigned to me. You've also got an idea around the priority of that task with the exclamation mark that's associated with that one. And when you dive in and click in on that task, you start to get a bit more of that, that high level information, you know, who it's assigned to, the specific location. Again, you've got the latitude and longitude, which can be quite handy if say it's a, a task for a contract that wants to come out and know the exact location in the paddock. And again, you've got those task details below that might go into a little bit more depth around. In this case, there's a tree down on the Eastern fence line. Another beauty um, within the, the mobile app is actually the ability to track your um, specific geolocation within the app. So there is a little icon on that map where you can select and it'll show you your exact location, which if you've got you know, new employees or in the case of say an agronomist or someone coming out on farm, they'll be able to see exactly where they are and orientate themselves around the property, um, which has certainly been a, a handy feature. For example, you know, if you're going down uh, to fix a trough in the, the back paddock, you're not exactly sure where it is, you know, the kind of ballpark area. It's just another handy way of knowing that you're in the, in the right location uh, for that task. So now that we've looked at the, the livestock paddocks and, and task cycle there, we'll now dive into the livestock tab at the bottom. So this is where the majority of your you know, live session crush side data analysis uh, is able to be uh, conducted and is probably the, the kind of most crucial aspect of this mobile app for that individual platform. So on this screen here, you've got a few options with the individual animals option. So this will just give you a list of all of the individuals that you've got on farm uh, at that point in time. And then you've also got your live session history at the bottom there. So for any live session that you run uh, with your hardware connected to AgriWeb uh, down in the yards, you'll be able to see that session history um, and easily go back in and view, you know, how many animals were, were around in that session. If it was a weight session, what was the average weight record for that session um, across all the individuals that ran through? And you've also got the option around those record templates, which I'll, I'll dive into in a, in a second, but we'll just jump onto this, this next page as if we were going into start a live session. And as you can see here, we've just got an idea around all of the, the compatibility with hardware that we, we currently have to be able to, I guess, uh, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connect into those, you know, Gallagher or True Test boxes uh, or Shewell and, and Tapari indicators um, or Wands or panel readers, et cetera, to then be able to start pulling some of that information such as your EID and your weights uh, through from those indicators back into the, the AgriWeb system. Um, I'll just jump in here. Again, you've got the option to select those species if it's uh, cattle or sheep. And on this page here, we've got the quick records. So if you're going into the yards and running a, and conducting a, a simple, say, a weight record for stock that you're running through, you'd be able to just select that uh, simple weight record. Uh, the other options are, you know, there's, there's a multitude here. You've got those treatment records. If you're just running, say, a mob through to hit them with a the back line, you'd go in and do that treatment record. Again, you've got a pregnancy scan um, session as well. So those quick records are certainly handy. Uh, to be able to jump in and just quickly um, organize that, that session and that data recording into AgriWeb. But then you've also got that templates concept uh, at the top of the screen there, which allows you to start to build out multi-phase and multi-record sessions whilst you're down in the yards. So a classic example of this would be, say, an induction session. 
where you're wanting to add those animals into the system. You're wanting to say, apply a, a backline to them and then also record a weight against them. Uh, the beauty of those templates is it'll allow you to do all of that in the one, in the one hit. So you'll be able to do an add animal step, um, a weight step and a, and a treatment step. And again, you've got the ability to combine these in, in whichever way you want. So that could be a, uh, could be a weight, a pregnancy scan um, record, or it could be a, a weight and a castration record, for example, around weaning. So you do have a few options to, to best suit um, whatever you're wanting to do down in the yards at that point in time. And it does save that, that manual uh, intervention of inputting those records in and certainly saves a lot of time in that regard there. Just uh, diving here now, we've got a quick um, demo of just how this would look uh, crush side. So I'll just play this and hopefully that audio will come through if you guys. Uh, we're down here this morning running through a crush side uh, live weight session with some Angus heifers that we've got here in the yards. And we're using the, the Gallagher system, the TWR system with a HR5 reader. 133 kilograms. We've got the automatic pump there, so 433 kilos, putting on 0.5 kilograms a day. So again, it's automatically moved on to the next individual there, 424 kilos and 0.5 kilograms a day gain as well. Very so, impressive, Ed. You're in, two, you're in two places at once, just dashed out to the yard, uh, scanned a couple of animals, nice job. Exactly. So hopefully yeah, everyone got that, that audio and just, yeah, a quick snippet of, of what it looks like down in the yards. Obviously you get a quite, quite a nice little prompt there. It'll read that weight out to you. It can be quite loud in the yards, but it can certainly be handy if you're able to, able to hear that. And then as you would have seen in that quick little demo, this is what the, uh, the individual uh, icon will appear when you're actually scanning stock in through. So that animal card will appear. Um, so you've got, again, a lot of that information about the individual. You've got your VID there, um, your age, your days on farm. So how long they've spent on farm. And then also their um, weights and those average daily gains. So once you've got that second weight into the, the system for that individual, it'll start to generate your average daily gain. Then you also start to generate an overall daily gain once you're getting multiple uh, weight records in, which can be quite handy, obviously, to, to see how they're tracking across certain periods of the year. Um, you know, with that average daily gain, if you're recording just at the start of spring and just seeing how they're going there, you can start to get an idea of, of you know, those most recent um, weight gain brackets. On top of that, you've also got the, uh, looks like you want to say something there, Mike? Yeah, I was just going to say, so we did have a question earlier, which, which I just answered by text, but it's probably worthwhile um, just repeating, which is... Um, uh, can the weight gains of stock be fed into AgriWeb easily? So um, I think as we've seen there via the video, that's the easiest way to get it in is, is via, the, uh, via the live scan. So what's the, what's the key benefit of doing that and, and having that real-time integration crush side as opposed to, say, having it on an indicator and then getting it later and doing an upload? Yeah, definitely. I guess um, one of the, the beauties of it as well is if you're, you know, drafting stocks, say, based on, you know, weight categories and, and things like that, often, you know, if you're trying to pull numbers, say, for, for a load of cattle in a, in a trading operation, as an example, um, you'll be wanting to know what that average daily gain is. Sometimes that's just as important as the actual weight. Um, you know, if they're not quite at the weight, but they've got an extremely strong daily gain, then you're going to be more inclined to potentially push them through. So I guess whilst you do still see that on the indicator, being able to look um, – in the live session, have that live session all sorted and actually draft your stock into those paddocks within AgriWeb after the session. Um, you can sit down there, say you've got the stocks in the pen, look at your AgriWeb and, and you know, confer with all the weights you've got in each of those draft pens, make sure you're happy with how that all looks before you then, you know, do that movement record back out into the paddocks in AgriWeb, which is certainly a lot handier in, in I know we've had personal situations where you're, you're down in the yards, you're looking at your, your Gallagher indicator or your notepad with all your numbers and you're trying to count how many you've got in each weight category you're trying to do all those groupings. Sometimes you'll obviously get the numbers incorrect and you're counting out the gate, which you'll probably still do. But again, you've got that, that fallback and that fail safe here within AgriWeb of being able to look at those specific groups, see what your weight categories are and just make sure everything's in order before you, you know, getting those stock out of the yards because obviously you don't want to bring them in there uh, too often. So that's, yeah, just one of those kind of examples. Obviously there's a lot more based on, um, on your operation. Another handy thing about it as well is you can actually dive into the top here and look at that full profile of the animal within a live session. So by diving into this full profile, it takes you back to that animal card. And again, say you have an animal that comes in that looks like it's not performing very well. It might have lost weight in the last few weeks since its last weight session. You can go into that history and see if there's anything in there that might indicate what might be going on with that individual. For example, here, you've got a note 
but you know, lame back right foot check not next time she's in the yard. So that could be an indication. Okay. I need to give them a second hit of antibiotics to see if we can clear that up, monitor that individual and see how they're going. So just some of those little things where you can easily jump in here and, and see what's going on with an animal um, and just dive back into their history. Uh, while she crush eyed, you've got them in the crush and you know, that's the best time to try and do anything if, if need be. So that's um, just quick overview, I guess, of all of the, you know, livestock side of things around the out there, diving into that live session with your menu icon down here. This is where you can start to build out on that inventory as well, where you can get those, you know, animal health records in, um, your feed, your fertilizers and your paddock treatments um, to start to pull out of with those records. As you can see here for that, you know, compliance perspective, looking in at your, your animal treatments, it's effectively a, a, an online stock take of what you've got at that time. You can see you've got your batch number, your expiry dates, um, your relative amount remaining, you know, in that case with the cattle max, I've got 10.1 litres of my 20 litres remaining. And as you apply those treatment records out, you know, crush side or in a bulk record, it'll automatically um, deduct the amount uh, that was applied. So you get that kind of real time idea of how much is, is remaining there. Another beauty about this is once those containers are empty, save you having a, you know, extremely long list here with a lot of empty containers, you can actually archive those containers. So they'll still appear. Um, you can you can always view your archived list. So if for any reason you need to go back in and look at the batch number of an old container that was used, um, you'll never actually lose that information, but you'll still be able to remove it off this current inventory list. So it's not clogging up the, clogging up the list there for you when you're, you know, trying to go in and apply another treatment record. And again, you've got your rainfall records here, so you can apply these out via um, rain gauges, again, in your rainfall records here. And you can start to dive in and see your you know, wet years to date, um, your total on a year to date. And also, once you start to you know, get multiple years in, you can start to see those fluctuations in your averages across those, those years in that graph there and start to see how you're tracking year on year with those, uh, those rainfall records. So that's uh, given us a quick overview of the mobile app. Just conscious of time, I might just dive in quickly and we'll go through the, the web app um, for a little bit. So what we've got here is just our farm dashboard. So this gives you a quick overview of, of what you've got on farm um, from, you know, your number of head here through to your breakdown of those into those management groups that, that you're able to set up. In this case, I've got my breeding enterprise and broken down between my bulls, cows, um, again, my trading and finishing steers and a few other uh, handy records there. Again, we've also got another view here on the web app of your rainfall summary. So you've got that information present on both of those devices uh, and you're easily able to access this, access it uh, whenever you kind of need. Again, with the farm map, for the one of consistency looks the same as you'd see on that mobile app. Again, you've got your mob icons, your landmarks um, all present here. When you click in on that animal card, uh, you'll again see your total area for that paddock. You've also then got your, your total DSE and your stocking rate. So those stocking rates are just calculated based on your area and your, your um, DSE load within that paddock. You have also might see those gates there. So we also have the ability to put your gates into the system as well. Um, and you can actually open those gates between paddocks. And if you do have say stock running between two connected paddocks, it will automatically update your stocking load across that new uh, combined area, which is obviously very handy to, to try and track that, uh, track that grazing uh, information between those you know, uh, conjoined paddocks. You've also got the insights up here, which is another extremely powerful thing for this map. So we've been looking at the, the default map here currently, which is just those, those specified paddock colors that you put in, but you've also got this ability to look at say a feed on offer uh, graph, for example. So as you look at this graph here, you can see that those colors down the bottom. So as the shades get darker, that just indicates that you've got a greater amount of um, feed on offer in kilograms of dry matter per hectare present in those paddocks um, after you've input that information. So if we dive in a little bit closer here, you can see, you know, you've got farm east with 2,200 kilograms of dry matter and you can start to get an idea around, um, you know, what that feed availability is looking like. And this can also be coupled with your uh, grazing days remaining. So you can start to see, you know, based on my stocking loads uh, and my available feed on offer, I've got a relative idea of how many grazing days remaining I've got in that paddock. And that can start to give you that, that insight into forward planning, you know, the next paddock that would come into that rotation based on, you know, when you go out there and you've got your, your pasture recordings that you can put in here uh, into the system. We'll quickly dive into the livestock here and we've got our insights page. So this is a beautiful tool to, to come back in after you've been down in the yards and start to look at some of those high level production metrics around your weight gains. 
So you can see here, we've got your live weight over time graph, an average daily gain graph, um, projected live weight graphs as well. So if you were to dive into, say for example, this uh, live weight over time graph, you're able to, uh, to expand in on this. With those colors that you can see there as well, uh, you can break those, those uh, graphs down into you know, age class. Uh, in this case, they're broken down into my management groups. Uh, you can break them down into vendors if you're a trading operation to see you know, the, the production of, of different vendors on farm. And then if I expand this here to, to dive into this live weight over time, you can then start to drill deeper into these and start to look at say um, certain cohorts of, of underperforming stock potentially. In this case, these yellow ones down here, the lightest at that at that weight range in that kind of age category. If I want to, you know, select my mouse, drag my mouse over those, I can actually highlight those specific ones and open specific animals within that group to again look at that animal card and see is there any contributing factor to, to why they're not performing well. And you can start to get an idea if there might be, if it's the paddock location they've been in, uh, if there's any other contributing factors as well, which you can also see from your, you know, your live weight graph over time and your history tab as well, um, back through those treatment records and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, so Ed, on this screen, um, there's a lot to take in. <laughs> there's a lot of different insights, but um, if, is there one specific example of a benefit that you, you believe you can glean from these insights? Is there one that you would pick? Yeah, definitely. I'd, I'd probably say in like a, a personal situation, the average daily gain in say a trading operation is um, is probably one of the most crucial ones here, uh, especially with, you know, the end goal is to, to produce those kilos as quickly as possible and increase that turnover so you can keep going back in. I'd say that average daily gain graph, you can, you can dive into that and you look at your, you know, specific vendors, see how they're performing, see which ones are doing the best because obviously the ones that are gaining the best, obviously going to have a quicker turnover. So really that graph starts to give you a, a clear indication of, you know, how they're tracking, how they're performing. Again, you can even see the ones that aren't performing very well, dive in and say, you know, have they been in a specific paddock for the last three weeks that may not be performing very well at the moment? And you can start to, you know, almost discern what's my feed quality like in some of those paddocks. Maybe it's potentially low. Let's move them into the other, another paddock and see how they're performing, you know, for the next few weeks. So I guess that, um, from a practical experience is, is one of those powerful reports you can come in and, and look at in that, that scenario. And then now I'll just uh, dive into the reports lastly here. So all of those records that you're putting in from a day-to-day -day perspective um, are also coming into these reports here. So, you know, whilst you can click in on those individuals and look at those specific records, you can actually get a, a kind of amalgamated uh, version of those here, which combines all of them. For example, your treatment records will have a list of all of those treatment records that have been applied to your stock. Um, and you can, in an auditing scenario, just export that treatment record. And it's got all of your withholding batch numbers, the day they were treated, what they were treated with and how much, um, just at the, at the touch of one button, which is obviously um, a beautiful time saver. Again, you've got your, your purchase and sale records. It'll start to give you, you know, in your purchase records, a um, dollar per kilo average for your purchases and vice versa for your sales as well. And then beyond that, you've also start to build out on some of these performance and production reports down here. So we've got the livestock reconciliation and our lifetime and on-farm uh, reports. So they start to combine some of all of those uh, individual record reports up the top to give you a bit more of an understanding around the production as, as a whole. So those on-farm and lifetime report performance reports start to combine all of your feed costs, your treatment costs, your purchase costs and sale costs, et cetera, to get a, a net turnover for individuals. Um, you can see how many days they've been on-farm and what their overall weight gain was for that time frame. So it's, it's a really powerful report. And then this livestock reconciliation report in its in its own as well is is extremely valuable so this is where you're able to dive in and see from a production standpoint what's happened between a period of time uh, for all of those animals under management on farm so that's from you know your starting head through to, to numbers bought bred sold um, any deaths um, also any aged in or out so for your weaning and your arcing you can see which age class um, you've got across the board and can be yeah, extremely handy for yeah, balancing those books and, and making sure you've got your you know, inventory value um, ascertained for, for your stock on farm. And then finally here with the, the inventory, again, very similar to the mobile app, you can see what you've got available. You can see your container size and the cost of those containers. Um, and then you've also got your batch numbers. Um, yeah, the touch of the button there. And then finally as well, we've got the tasks. So as you can see with your tasks, it gives you a bit more of an idea with a list view here around the status, if they're complete, uh, incompleted, and a bit more information around those, um, those specific, uh, specific tasks as well. 
And I'll just jump across to, to the actual live um, web app for a moment. And looking at this map here as well, if I wanted to save you those tasks on the map on the web app, you've got this view option uh, at the top here where you can just simply go in here and say, I'd just like to look at my tasks. And again, it'll break it down to just those icons. Um, so you will still be able to see those tasks on the map while also viewing them uh, in that task list um, down here as well. Cool. And, and um, I, uh, I'm i going to defend myself here and say I was answering some questions. So I may have missed this. Ed, did you also go into the live demo and show the grazing insights? Uh, we did show a bit of the um the feed on offer graph as yeah. well but i guess another one that we can dive into which i did touch on briefly was say for example that um that day since graze or the grazing days remaining so similar to that feed on offer graph you can start to see here if you've got any paddocks that are you know within um four days of grazing remaining um 10 days down the bottom here from this color chart and then when you click in on these paddocks as well, you can start to see, um, you know, your stocking load across the board there. You've got your stocking rate, um, the amount of days grazed. So 156 days this, this model has been in this paddock for and also the relative amount of, of time remaining. So in this case, 100 plus days, because looking at my total feed and offer and my growth rate and my stocking load, um, this paddock certainly beating the stock. You can obviously go and put a whole lot more in there. Um, and so, yeah, it just gives you a clear indication of, of you know, how that's performing. Uh, across the board with the stock in there. All right, cool. And we had a question from Sam, which is topical, which is how is dry matter calculated? Mm -hmm. So dry matter at the moment is uh, a manual input, but you can bulk input that across properties. Uh, and the way you, you'd be able to do that is just by putting in the manual value. So we do have a uh, MLA pasture um, calculator within here. So based on the, the relative height of the feed in the paddock, you can estimate what that um, available feed on offer is. But if you if you are aware of what that specific feed on offer is, you can input that in um, by all means. And yeah, as I said, there's the, the bulk update option to be able to you know bulk select 10 paddocks that are all you know relatively the same feed on offer and, and update that. So that's, I guess, from the manual perspective, but we do have a, an integration moment with SIBO Labs, um, which kind of takes that, that manual process out and increases that automation. So they're, you know, passes from space. So they've got the ability to, um, with their kind of software and, and um, algorithms at the moment, be able to identify what the, what the amount of feed on offer is in that paddock and will actually automatically update um, every time those, those readings are taken. Fantastic. All right, that's brilliant, Ed. Um, so I think that concludes our demonstration component. I will, with a bit of luck, go back to sharing the right screen. <laughs> it's going to take quite a bit of luck, actually. Um, and talk amongst yourselves while I try and figure this out. And I, for the life of me, can't see it. So let me just <laughs> close this for a second. And I'm going to go back and find my right browser. And you know what? I think I've completely lost it. There it is. Okay. All right. Of course, there it is. Fine. While you're, you're jumping that, I just noticed there's another question in here as well. Um, and it's around, can it use Sarah's tag information? Um, that's a, a very good question. Um, I would say at this stage, I'm not entirely sure myself, but I'm assuming um, in terms of just the ID information, yes, but a lot of the tracking around, you know, um, individual location within the paddock from those Sarah's tags at this stage, I guess that's a, a discussion for us to yeah, have with Sarah's, which we have um, yeah, been in, in, in talks with for, for a while now. So I guess it's um, a matter of, yeah, seeing where that kind of progresses to. Absolutely. All right. I'm going to launch. Um, the final poll here, which is now you've seen the demonstration from Ed. Thanks for doing that. This, uh, this poll is from what you've seen. Um, was there one particular thing that was of most interest? And there's been some, some great questions and some chat. Um, but if you can pop something in there. Um, so the question is, what about AgriWeb most interest you? So, or, you know, what in the demonstration was of most interest? And um, uh, across those different things, whether it was managing livestock, capturing individual animal data, insights into what are the best performers, livestock rec, grazing insights, compliance or task management. That'd be great. And we're getting lots of, lots of responses now. And um, are there any more questions while we're doing that? We've got just a couple of minutes left, whether that's questions about AgriWeb or Delta for Ed, myself or Sophie. All right. And while you're thinking about that, I don't have any thinking music, but we've got thinking poll time happening and we're 
looks like we've got everyone that's going to respond has responded. So let me just end that and share the results. And um, so you can see that accurate livestock reconciliation was actually number one at 33%, which is, which is quite interesting. And then managing livestock on the farm map, followed by capturing individual animal data cross site. So um, a good, good, good mix across um, a range of different things. So thanks for responding to that poll. And there's, uh, let me just see if there's a question in the chat. Okay, this is a, <laughs> a post from Amber, who's uh, our, we our webinar extraordinaire that's done all the hard work behind the scenes to pull this together. Um, and as she says, if there's any final questions, any burning questions, now is your, your final chance. And um, while you're thinking about that, I'll just quickly summarise with these last couple of slides, which is AgriWeb and Delta, why we've come together and why this partnership exists is it's all about more value for you. And from a Delta perspective, the things that Sophie's spoken about, it's better utilisation of the technology, it's bringing together and combining agronomic and livestock advice. It's giving real-time advice. So by having insights to the agri-web usage, that, that real-time advice can, can take place. And efficiency, so being able to ask, uh, allocate tasks across owners, managers, farm hands um, from the advisor and including the advisor. So efficiency across the entire operation and then taking all that and being able to do forward planning and decision-making through your Delta Livestock Production Advisor. Um, there is a question here, which is, can we scan in chemical drums and others into the inventory, i.e. QR code? And I'm going to pause and let Ed answer that one. No, nice, thank you. Yeah, so with the, the QR codes at the moment, no. So we actually do have the, um, the system in place to be able to scan those, those QR codes in. It's just a, a matter of getting that actual product, uh, kind of a list um, created to then be able to input that in, obviously with the, the fluctuating, you know, getting those batch numbers and things like that in. So uh, it is something that is, is certainly of interest uh, if that does develop. But yeah, at the moment, uh, there isn't any uh, QR code capabilities, unfortunately. Yeah. And Trevor's asked uh, what hardware do you need for Bluetooth or wireless connection? Um, I think what we'll do is we can add in, um, actually follow up, we can put in the link to the hardware page on the AgriWeb website, but in brief summary, um, Datamars, Tapari, Gallagher. So pretty much most of the hardware that's out there that allows you to do uh, scanning by the indicators and the scales are available via Bluetooth or wireless to connection to, uh, to connect and integrate to AgriWeb. Um, and Tom, I'll come back to you in a moment and Fiona as well. Let me just finish this off quickly. Uh, I know I was mid stride. So the benefits from an AgriWeb perspective and the benefits you get from AgriWeb are all the things that uh, Ed demonstrated. So livestock pasture, task and people management, the ability to ensure that you're compliant, the mobile capability, having it in your pocket on electronic device, offline and online, and then the real time insights. And so the value that means for you, the producer, the best possible performance, you can save time. It's got greater efficiency up to 4.3 hours a week saving is what our customers report. Business transparency. So you've got complete insight as to what's happened in the past. So you can plan for the future, give you that secure future. And lastly, sleep better at night, which is a not unimportant thing to think about as a, as a farmer. So these are the combination and the benefits that we believe you can achieve with a combination of, of Delta and AgriWeb. Um, so we're just at time. So thank you for staying on for the full hour. Um, Tom, your question, can I get financial results for each paddock and compare cropping to livestock? Um, and um, Ed, what do you think about that one? Can I get financial results for each paddock and compare cropping to livestock? Yeah, so I guess from a, the financials around, you know, what you're inputting in for, for your um, cropping, uh, we can certainly uh, track those, those kind of input costs uh, through to your harvest yields and, and uh, returns on that. Uh, we do have 
So as we've been showing here, this is the, the individual-based system. Uh, we also do have our mob-based um, system as well that, that is currently there. And we do have our paddock cost of production report present in that one, which actually starts to build all that out together. So you can see what that um, that kind of you know input cost um, is for, for those paddocks. Uh, in terms of the, the current reporting capabilities on the individual side of things, there is no, I guess, comparison between how a specific paddock operates from weight gains um, throughout a year versus that kind of um, yield potential from your, your cropping. Um, but again, something that, that certainly should be uh, discussed in our product team. Beautiful. Well, thanks for that, Ed. And thank you, everyone, for attending tonight's webinar, this uh, joint webinar between Delta Agribusiness and AgriWeb. Thank you to my co-panellists, um, Ed McGeek and Sophie Smith. Thank you both very much for your um, insights and uh, sharing your experience. It's been hugely valuable. And a reminder, this is our final slide. So you will receive a follow-up email and we've recorded this webinar. And so we'll share the link to that recording so you can watch it at your leisure. And we'll also share the ability for you to book in a follow-up consultation with an AgriWeb and Delta consultant. That'll be in your inbox tomorrow. And final reminder that uh, anyone that attended this webinar or in fact are existing Delta customers and decide that AgriWeb is the application that they wanna take on then you're eligible for a 15% discount. That's it for tonight. Thank you once again, uh, really enjoyed it. I hope you got value out of this session. Thanks for all your questions during the session and uh, speak to you again on another session shortly or perhaps even in person at some point in the not too distant future, which would be marvelous. All right, thanks everyone. Thank you.